So next, let me explain you uh, what are the things that we need to keep in mind when we are uh, performance tuning. How do you decide whether your Spark job is, is speed enough or sufficient enough to process the, the incoming data at which it is getting generated? Okay, so there is uh, achieving a stable configuration. So there is a log messages that you will always see in your logs. The total delay. So if you observe our log messages also here, so the total delay will be, there will be one log message that will be coming for every batch. So total delay, the job scheduler. So total delay in processing the current uh, batch is 3.197 seconds for time for this window for this batch, batch that started at this particular timestamp, to process that, it was the delay time. Okay, and next, similarly, if you find the next search, unfortunately, I have only one. Okay, I have only one then in this. For every batch, uh, it should print as that. Of course, it, it prints as that. So when, while it is continuously running, then we might see that. Um, so what I'm trying to say is, from one batch to another batch, it keeps on printing that delay time. This is the only one that we have here. So from batch to batch, it keeps on printing this. If it always getting increased, so for one batch, it is 3.19 seconds. And for the next batch, if it prints four seconds, for the next batch, if it prints five seconds, for the next batch, if, if it prints six to second, six a second. So if the total delay is continuously increasing, then unstable as the system is unable to process data as fast as it's receiving. So from batch to batch, the delay time is getting increased means the previous batch was not processed on time and it was taking more than expected. And the current batch is again getting increased. That means, so you're not processing at the speed of your data receiving. Your processing is taking more time than the data uh, incoming speed. So if that is the case, then we obviously have to increase some cores so that it can execute on multiple executors. So executor num cores, you can in increase them. The total delay stays roughly constant Instead of increasing, if it stays roughly constant and around the two times of the configured batch duration. Let's say if I specified my batch duration as 10 seconds, if it is less than or equal to the two times of your batch duration, so this is okay then. So it is able to process on time. It's a stable configuration. Okay, so how to configure, how to figure out a good stable configuration? Start with a low data rate, as small as possible, small number of nodes, reasonably large batch duration, a small low data rate. Um, so push your low with the less speed, large batch duration as five to 10 seconds and increase the data rate slowly and then observe your system is able to process that speed or not. 
and find the bottleneck in the job processing as well while processing the job so you can see the job stages and find out which stage is ex exactly taking more time and then see if we can do any optimization at the stage level okay so this, this much of things nobody will ask you in your in interviews also but maybe your real time projects maybe after six months or one year if your enterprise is going to do all this stuff that time you may refer these things back at this moment uh, i mean mostly you even if you if you have to use these things mostly it will be for kind of uses nobody will start directly the projects uh, is the real time project <laughs> okay and for example like on which stage is taking uh, a longer time if you find that like if the first map stage on raw data is taking most time mm -hmm. then try enabling delayed scheduling by setting property spark dot locality dot wait equal to true splitting your data source into multiple substrings meaning multiple partitions repartitioning the raw data into many partitions as first step because the first map stage itself is taking long time means it is not having enough of the tasks to read that uh, rdd if that is not having enough rdds um, enough tasks to read that rdd you divide that into more partitions so that you will get more tasks then that map task will can be increased speed if any of the subsequent stages are taking a lot time try increasing the level of parallel parallelism obviously the partitions repartitioning them increasing the more tasks and for each producer keep increasing the uh, the driver memory and the executor memories and the number of cores keep increasing them on the nodes and then maybe you make your the speed of your input data okay and few more optimizations that you can think of is like try to enable this serializer spark serializer as a cryo serializer as we were talking about so this is one of the configuration property that you can set at your spark conf object okay set property uh, spark dot serializer as spark cryo serializer spark closer serializer as even for closers okay we have scalar closers that we have seen right so any data that gets distributed in the closers so inside a map if you have any closer that is getting executed on multiple worker nodes that time also serializer will uh, will come into picture because the data gets transferred from your worker nodes to your driver back right you can specify these two properties to enable the cryo serialization than the default serialization for both data and tasks okay so when you are persisting your rddds or dd streams that time try to disable the serialization because serialization if you enable them uh, while persisting while reading it back it takes relatively longer time without serialization if you just use memory only that will be faster than memory only serializer so these are some of the hints that you guys have to keep in mind so something like start increasing the driver memories executor memories and cores and repartitioning them whenever is needed based on the which stage is taking longer times and keep persisting them uh if needed wherever, wherever is needed and when you are persisting them try to uh, avoid the serialization and in overall serialization of your application uh where your rddds partitions will get transferred or results will get transferred across the network that time try to enable your cryo serializations instead of your java serialization these are some of the optimization techniques of the guidelines that you guys can keep in mind and further guidelines performance tuning you may refer this path tuning guide tuning.html 
and fast streaming during events.